Do you know what this is? This is my Anner and we will take a look today on this little antenna here. First of all, thanks to Peter for sending this to me from California. Um, I am pretty excited about this unit because it is a AIS receiver and transmitter. And I already have to say, please take a look if this is allowed in your country. In Europe, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to transmit, so I will use this as a receiver only. So receiver for AIS data, but as it's also a GNSS receiving unit. So a global positioning system unit for the different positioning systems like GPS, Galileo, GLONASS, Baidu, all the different systems around the world. So you have two in one, AIS and GNSS, and that is pretty nice. And it is uh, directly uh, compatible with the MacArthur head. So we can connect this with a simple Cat5 cable. This is pretty awesome. And this is what we want to do today. So what do we find in this nice package? We find two PCBs. We just need one for our project. We find the antenna core and some assembly material, which is uh, heat shrink tubing for the ceiling. Uh, then a main case, which will protect everything and is uh, necessary for assembly. And these two long carbon fiber tubes, which you can see there are to yeah, to build the antenna, let's say, you will see this uh, in a second. We got two PCBs, one main PCB um, and one PCB is just a breakout board for some testing. I don't need this for our test. We have MacArthur. And then this is the, the, uh, the antenna with an SMA uh, connector. Um, yeah, for assembly, you don't need much. You need some glue and a heat gun. The heat gun is necessary for shrinking the tube. Um, yeah, and let's go with the assembly. And the, uh, the first thing you need to do is uh, to build the protection for the antenna itself. So you will take the carbon fiber tube and you just simply put it over uh, the flexible antenna the larger diameter first and then the thinner diameter with the blue end first and you connect it so that you can't see the blue part anymore and that the flexible antenna slightly comes out and then you just pull it back a little bit so that it's hidden in the carbon fiber tube. So that is the perfect length. I decided to put a little bit glue on the carbon to fix it at this position. This is not necessary and not part of the instructions, but I was too uh, yeah, nervous that I might move the two pieces. And in this case, uh, it might happen that I uh, shrink the tubing on the wrong length. So I went for this way. Okay, you can remove the um, carbon fiber tube and you need to uh, use the smaller shrinking tube around it. You should ensure that you have a little bit overlap here so that there's some uh, more shrinking tube uh, over the carbon fiber tube. You cut the end on the other side as well. So now we have a perfect and even a little bit too long shrinking tube around our carbon fiber tube. And now it's time for the heat gun. Just uh, use the heat gun step by step, go from one side to the other to shrink the tubing and get it, uh, get a perfect fit. Is it shrinking tube or shrink tubing or whatsoever? But I liked this approach. It is really um, yeah, working well. And at the end, it was fitting perfectly. You need the end cap uh, now. Um, which will protect our antenna so that no water can get in. And you need to cut off uh, the uh, shrinking tube or shrink tubing, which was too long. Um, and you simply place now the flexible antenna again inside. You might need to rotate the carbon fiber a little bit because the inner diameter might um, block the flexible antenna 
for uh, from getting through but uh, nothing which causes a headache so just put it in and at the end yeah we need to put the end cap on top just put some super glue in and glue the end cap on the end of our carbon fiber and now you can connect the main PCB to the antenna and put the protection tube around it um, so that it yeah, has a good fit and if you are happy with that we can start uh, assembling this. Follow Peter's instructions and uh, cut the larger uh, shrink tubing to get this as the first layer to um, fix the housing and the antenna part together. And when you are finished the heating of the shrink tubing, you take the next one with a thinner diameter and you make the upper connection uh, watertight and your antenna looks already almost finished. Now we can connect the antenna with a CAT5 cable to our MacArthur head and the MacArthur head now needs a 12 volt supply to power my Yanar. So 12 volt power and the 12 volt switch must be connected. The instruction uh, state that the PCB for 12 volt is not necessary, that you can power the Raspberry with 5 volts, but I don't like this approach. So now everything is set to 12 volts and no 5 volt connection is applied at all. On the left side you see my daisy head on another Raspberry 4 just to compare these two although the antennas are not comparable because this is much smaller. Uh, just if you are confused with my, uh, my 13 volts um, my power supply has a fixed 12 volt output which I am using uh, so forgot this number uh, and you can use any power supply the consumption is very low. Again the wiring um, you can see here that there's no 12 volt PCB is connected and it's still working I have it connected and I power my Raspberry using 12 volts you see the 12 volts with uh, ground and the uh, steady plus and then there's the switch to the 12 volt on off uh, input it must be be close to turn the raspberry on and here our cat 5 cable and here is another input which is important this is the transmit switch we said it already it's not allowed in Europe with this uh, system to transmit AIS so this switch must be on if it's off it would uh, transmit uh, so that means if there's nothing connected uh, you would transmit your AIS information but there's another switch, a software switch, and both must be on. Um, yeah, we will take a look in a second on that. So even if this is not connected, you need to turn the software switch off. If this is connected, you can put this on to turn sending off. Just quickly here you can see hardware on on it's like a and connection so both must be on to transmit if hardware is on software is off it's off if hardware is off and software is on or off is also off yeah so uh, it's only on if both are on you can see the leds on our macarthur head you will get ais and gps information uh, as for receiving and also for sending which is not allowed in Europe and GPS so if you have a steady light you know that there's a GPS fix. You will also see that a MIA 0183 is flashing this is because the MacArthur or the Mayana is sending the information to the MacArthur head on uh, the NMEA 0183 um, and wire UART uh, to our system. So to connect our uh, Mayana, this is very easy. We just need the serial again and in my case it was already configured as my daisy head because both are using UART1. So uh, it's already there and I just renamed it. What you need to do if it's a fresh installation, you need to turn on UART0 and you need to reboot. And if you uh, uh, did that, you will find this first entry here with no Elias and you just enter Mayana. On my, in my case, it was written or uh, Daisy because I had Daisy connected before to this um, Raspberry. So I just renamed it and you specify this NMIA 0183. And afterwards, you need, of course, to add a Signal K connection so that you have it on Signal K. 
with a baud rate of 38400 and that's it yeah so it is available on signal k you need to approve on signal k of course that it may have write and read access you should install settings if you didn't do this so far you should install mayena this is for the normal operation even not necessary um, because it's only necessary if you want to send data. Here you see my NIS transponder. And when we start this, um, where is it? Here on top, I think. When we start this, you can see that I also didn't enter anything. So my MMSI and so on is empty. I'm not uh, transmitting currently any data because my software TX switch is off. Because I have nothing connected on my hardware TX switch, it's on, but as we said, on and off is still off. So here, when you're not inside Europe and you are allowed to send with this device, you can enter your call sign, MMSI, vessel name, and so on and turn on the transmit switch and then you can turn use the hardware switch to turn it off if you want to stay incognito yeah that's how this is working here you can save ah you can also do firmware updates with that maybe this is also interesting for the only rx uh, guys here so you can download the newest firmware and simply upload it um, or update it with um, uh, this nice app so that is much easier than using some special protocols and when you now start the signal case server you can see that your mayana device is existing and we get uh, data in um, which is gps and also ais on the same stream so of course uh, the same input it still is divided so you see when you find vessels here these are coming from the AIS stream you see here Mayana AI as the source and you will find all the information for the vessels here um, and when you go to the self context and you see already open plotter Mayana is sending some information hardware revision and so on and of course when we filter on Mayana we can also find other things like the GPS information or GNSS, which is even better. So I have it now uh, indoor, but it was very quickly connecting to satellites and found several satellites in just a little uh, glimpse. So this was very nice. So I really enjoyed how quickly it is connecting. And that's all already. When you're now uh, going to your plotter you can see the AIS information and also the GPS information of your ship uh, immediately you just need to connect to your server and there are different possibilities uh, for the connection so I um, connected now via signal K server on port 3000 you can also connect on the TCP server on 10.11.0 uh, both is possible of course signal k when you are uh, using open cpn would be the preferred connection but if you're using something else on your tablet you can simply use the tcp and you will also get uh, gps or gnss information plus the ars input directly via the server so very uh, nice and easy setup. Um, I really enjoyed this. So that is the Mayana and I really enjoyed it. It was easy to assemble. It is easy to be integrated into Open Plotter and Signal K as well as the DAISY IS is also uh, being easily integrated by I like of course the GNSS on top. So you have a reliable GPS, uh, Galileo and so on source which you can use on your Signal K network and all in one housing. And I don't need my splitter anymore if I would assemble this on my boat because I have two antennas. So very nice. Uh, thank you, Peter, again. Um, be careful if you want to use tr the, the transmitting part, if this is allowed in your country or in the area where you are. But um, from the open plotter, open marina, open everything perspective, this is a really cool gadget together with the MacArthur head. The overall system with Signal K 
gets yeah really really cool i enjoyed this complete video series about it so thank you so much have a great day if you're interested into something else which has to do with raspberry sailing leave a comment yeah don't know when you i see you next time because this was the macarthur head series maybe i will add the note red part but then we are really at the end of this little exercise thank you so much see you bye bye See you next time.